Uh, yeah, welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Got a pretty interesting show for you here today. Um, Alan Iverson, interesting comments on the GOAT debate. But we'll get to that. Um, if you haven't already and you're here on YouTube, you know what time it is. Please go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, that notification bell. We're getting closer and closer to that magic number of 1,000 subscribers. And when we do, that's when it's really going to pop off because we're going to start the live call-in shows. I'm going to try to do one of those like one a week. And I know a lot of you would love to get at me for a lot of the things I say that you agree with or disagree with. And I love it because that gives me an opportunity to better interact with you guys and help the show grow. So make sure you're sharing the show. Make sure if you're listening, you're subscribing. Make sure um, you know people who love sports talk and want to hear a different voice that you got them subscribing too. So click that like, that subscribe and that notification bell. Make sure you stay aware anytime new episodes of the show come out or we drop new content. Also, if you want the audio only version of the podcast, you know what to do. Open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast. We should come right up. Please give us that like, give us that five-star review and leave us a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. Now let's get right to it. So goat debate, never ending, right? Michael Jordan, LeBron James. I've talked about this ad nauseum. I believe Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time. I think it's a pretty simple argument, but there's a lot of people who think it's LeBron, and that's cool too, while I disagree. But one of my biggest issues with that is how is it that people decided that they were just going to bypass Kobe? How are you going to do that, right? Kobe is arguably the closest thing we've ever seen to Michael Jordan. And while he may not have been as efficient as LeBron, he was an absolute machine and way more skilled than LeBron. So you look at that and you say, man, just watching what Kobe did, watching his ferociousness, watching his competitiveness, watching his skill set. And you say, how do people just jump right over Kobe for LeBron, right? Okay. LeBron has had an incredible career. His stats are up there with arguably anybody. I think he's the first 39,000, 9,000 rebound, 9,000 assist guy in history. So those are incredible numbers, no doubt. 21 seasons in the league. Um, but all that said, this is interesting because one of the things I always point to when I get in this quote unquote goat debate and I'm talking to people and they're saying it's LeBron, right? I'm saying, okay, the good thing about that is LeBron has been in a league, as we mentioned, 21 years. So he's been a long, around long enough to have played against a lot of all time great players. Right. And what I love about that is there are players still around some, I don't, I don't know if there's any still playing, but the, there are guys still around kind of in the media sphere and, you know, just people who've been interviewed who have played against Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James. And that's the beautiful thing, right? Because we can get their thoughts on how they line these guys up, right? Now, most of those guys would kind of put those those three at the top of the GOAT list. Um, Kobe's definitely in my top 10. Last time I did a top 10, LeBron wasn't in it. Um, and that's still difficult for me, uh, how how I would kind of remake my top 10, because realistically, in terms of the winning, in terms of the statistical production and the career he's had, it would be seemingly egregious to keep LeBron out of the top 10. But my issue is skill set, number one. And number two, who am I taking out of my top 10 for LeBron to be in it? Because that's, that's what I do, right? Whenever I think about top 10s, it's not about, okay, put this guy in, put that guy in. It's always, okay, now who are you going to remove because you want to put those guys in? It's not just a, a flat out, okay, it slides down to accommodate wherever you want to put somebody in. But anyway, it's a different story for a different day. So the fact is, you got a lot of guys who are still around who've been talked to and asked about this question on the GOAT debate. Guys who played against Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, right? And who better realistically to give you the take on who are the better players out of the three than guys who laced them up against all three, right? Not guys like me talking heads and fans and journalists who just sit behind the mic or write stories or tell you about it. No, no, no. Not necessarily coaches who coached against all three, although that might be an interesting, um, that might be a very interesting thing for somebody to do is take a poll of coaches, even if it's anonymous, to kind of get their feel. Guys who had to draw up the X's and O's and try to control all those three from a defensive standpoint. Um, but I think that arguably the best way to gauge this is the guys who had to play against them, right? The guys who played against all three. So I actually, um, was looking for some information on that. And how that came about is, uh, Allen Iverson did a sit down with Rachel Nichols and he actually brought it up, but, um, let's go ahead. I'm going to play the clip for you. You can listen to it. Then we'll come back and talk about it. And 
we'll get into the thoughts of some of the other all-time great players and the things they had to say about LeBron, MJ, and Kobe and kind of where they rank all three. All right, so check out Allen Iverson. We'll be back to talk about it. With Kobe, he was so different to where it's, it was like, Phil, I want the assignment. You know what I mean? Take Fisher off him. I want the assignment. Mm -hmm. I've never seen nobody as competitive like him, but Mike, that's it. Like when people talk about, you know, your favorite players and, and the, or the best players in the world, you know, I say Mike and I say Kobe. You know what I mean? And then everybody else. LeBron's after that for you? Um, definitely. Okay. Definitely after that. Okay. So you heard what AI had to say, right? Allen Iverson, clearly he thinks he has the answer. You heard what he had to say. And it's kind of one of the things that I generally am in agreement with. And it's why is it that when we talk about this GOAT debate, right? People jump right over Kobe to put LeBron against Michael. That doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, if you just look at the two play, okay, you can say that I think LeBron has a 16 to six all time head to head uh, matchup lead against Kobe. And obviously, you know, God bless the dead, Kobe is never going to be in a position. And even if he was still alive, he's retired, right? He would never be in a position to, you know, uh, catch up and take the lead on that. Um, obviously, Kobe's been long retired, right? So LeBron won the head to head matchups. And I think he had, for the most part, the better statistical numbers in those matchups. Now, the way they played and the fact that LeBron generally is the system, all that plays a role, right? But at the end of the day, what I look at is skill set, right? in that lebron and i've talked about this before i don't believe lebron's toolkit was as as deep as kobe's it's just not right he just doesn't have the quote unquote bag that kobe had he can't do the things kobe could do right now realistically if you're a lebron fan or whatever you can say that kobe couldn't do the things lebron could do right he wasn't quite the rebounder and he wasn't the passer now uh, a quick story right um one of kobe's teammates i can't remember who it was i heard this story but one of kobe's teammates bet him like hey you know you can't get a triple double next game right because lebron you know lebron's out here getting these triple doubles like nothing and kobe's like what if i want a triple double i could have one every game right so the next game out kobe has nine assists in the first half right and of course you know he's gonna score but he has nine assists in the first half and he's like yo i just did that to show you i can do this anytime i want to but that wasn't kobe's game right to be a facilitator kobe's game was to go out and gut you and score as many points and demoralize you and destroy you, right? That's how he went about it. Now, was that always the best way? No, not necessarily, but he also didn't always, for a long stretch in his career, he didn't have, you know, loaded up super teams. But again, different argument for a different day. So, um, Kobe, skill set wise, he could do most of what LeBron could do. He wasn't obviously as physically durable as LeBron, but he was a better on-ball defender as is evidenced by the nine times uh, first team all NBA defensive selections, right? Um, clearly he was good enough to be an MVP and he got that once and he got one of those stolen by Steve Nash, right? He's got, a, I believe, a couple scoring titles. So Kobe could get it done. He could flat out get it done. We know that on both sides of the ball. Now, um, Kobe absolutely amazing and you can just watch right like if you if you watch lebron's highlights versus kobe's highlights it's a totally different thing just in terms of skills right kobe is just i would i would argue that he's probably the you know the second or best tough shot maker first or second best tough shot maker in the history of the nba obviously you have michael jordan and you know kobe those are the two guys right but anyway um yeah, Kobe was an absolute monster. But where, where I want to go with this is, you know, there's a number of guys I'm going to I'm going to name. Actually, I'm just going to go down a list. I took notes on it who played against Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant and LeBron James played against all of them in their primes. Right. So we can't say, oh, you know, played against this guy when he got old or this guy when he was young. Right. So you got Chauncey Billups. He has Michael Jordan, best of all time. And then he has Kobe after that. So naturally, that le puts LeBron behind the other two. Gary Payton has Michael Jordan as the best of all time. Um, Vince Carter has Michael Jordan, then Kobe, then LeBron James. Are we starting to sense anything here? I'm going to go on. You have Charles Barkley, right? He has Michael Jordan. Obviously, he played against him in the finals. That's another all-time great that Michael Jordan kept from winning anything. Followed by Kobe, right? Because if you remember, I don't know if you saw it or not. Um, Charles Barkley was on uh, TN uh, NBA on TNT, and he's talking to the other guys, and he's like, you know, LeBron is great, and I love LeBron, but the question is, why do people just keep passing over Kobe? 
you know we can't just ignore kobe like that and that was Shaq said you know i i'm i would i was gonna say the same thing so barkley has michael jordan then he has kobe then he has lebron Shaq has michael jordan then kobe then lebron ray allen has michael jordan and see ray allen is one i play per pay particular attention to because this is a guy who came in the league in 1996 when Jordan was at the beginning of his second three-peat was still an all-NBA first-team defender was still leading the league in scoring and was still that guy so Ray Allen played against Michael Jordan in his prime he played against Kobe young Kobe because they came in in the same year and he played against Kobe in his prime and he played against and with LeBron James in his prime so Ray Allen among all these guys probably has the best vantage point to make this statement and ray allen has michael jordan ahead of all of them and another thing when ray allen gave his all-time starting five he had lebron off the bench michael jordan and kobe as starters take from that what you will um ron artest or meta world peace or i'm not sure what he's going by nowadays i definitely don't want to disrespect him but um i think it's meta sanford artest but anyway he has michael jordan as number one you heard allen iverson already michael jordan and kobe then LeBron, Jalen Rose, Michael Jordan, Tracy McGrady, Michael Jordan, Reggie Miller, who had some memorable battles with Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Jason Kidd. He said Michael Jordan. And that's funny because Kidd came in the league in 94. Uh, I think 94 was his rookie year. Yeah. So he got the full brunt of Michael Jordan, not quite at his peak, but super elite Michael Jordan still. He got the full brunt of that. Of course, he played against um, all-time great Kobe, and he played against LeBron at his peak, right? And beat him in the NBA Finals, you know? So he said Michael Jordan, although, oddly enough, um, since those comments, those were a couple years ago he made those comments, he has now, I think, recently said that, um, I guess due to the statistical production, that he's got LeBron James as the greatest of all time, and nobody's going to be able to catch him because of the numbers. So I respect that. But I do think it's interesting that when he was talking about him, he was saying, you know, uh, he played against all three and he picked Michael Jordan. The point is that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, all timers, twelve all timers. Maybe we'll say eleven. Maybe you don't count Chauncey Billups, but he may go into the Hall of Fame. But the point is, that's a lot of all timers there, and every single one of them had Michael Jordan as the greatest of all time. Like, come on, man, come on, and. Again, I point to Ray Allen, a guy who played against and with LeBron James. Saw him up close and personal every day. That has to mean something. So the point I'm trying to make is um, the LeBron fans want to make this argument. But at the end of the day, if you can't even definitively put LeBron James past Kobe, then we might want to back up a little bit on the GOAT argument. It's, you know, I think it's absurd. But anyway. Uh, I want to know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that LeBron James should be ahead of Kobe? I know that a lot of you LeBron fans, who, you know, you're going to come with a ton of stats, and that's cool. You know, that's cool. But if you just watch him play, I don't know how much you watch Kobe play, but if you just watch him play, I don't think there's an argument. But regardless, um, do you think LeBron should be ahead of Kobe? What do you think about all these all-time greats who played against all three, uh, almost to a man, putting Michael Jordan first and Kobe second, and then LeBron third? Um, leave your comments in the comment section. Can't wait to get back to you. Can't wait to hear from you. I'll be back next time. And I'm out. Peace.